Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on whatever time it is or whatever part of the day it is, wherever you're tuning in from. But this is uh, Dave from Follow the Figures, uh, using speed figures in thoroughbred racing. And this is the, the inaugural kickoff video. And each of my video segments upcoming, uh, what I like to do is I like to, I'm picking a race, an upcoming race, nothing that's already been run. And I'd like to uh, break it down and handicap it for you using these methods. Uh, I'm not big on intros, so I will not drag out my intros. I like to get right into it, but being that this is uh, the inaugural video uh, for this system, I'd like to spend a little time getting you to understand that we're not just looking at speed figures here. Okay, You're going to see that there's, there, there's a qualitative evaluation or analysis of, of all runners first. Uh, that initial sweep will determine sometimes whether I even look at the figures of a particular horse. I might even just, I might scratch that horse, eliminate that horse right out of the gate. Uh, secondly, each of the videos that I, that, that I post will maybe focus a little bit of time where I'm thorough with a particular portion of my methods and I'm quick with all the rest of them. Okay. This is not meant to be one video, show you everything, how we do it, how to determine whether or not to uh, use a particular figure, maybe um, pass a race, play a race, and so forth. Okay, it's it, it's meant to be sort of like a puzzle, where you know my second video comes along, my third video comes along. You start to learn a little bit more and more about the system, but you will also see in my first comment below in the section comment section below, I do have my link for eBay. Okay, uh, where if you're interested in getting the full tutorial, which is if you're looking right now, you're looking at the, the 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 cover screen for it. It's a 106 slide tutorial. It's found on eBay. It's eight dollars and ninety nine cents, and it breaks down all these method methods very thoroughly. But without further ado, I'd like to get right into uh, our race, our feature race today, which is um, again Keeneland tenth on Saturday, October sixth, and it's a one mile stakes race, a Grade One actually on the turf the first thing i'm going to do here is i'm going to go through my initial sweep and with a route race or a two-turn race when i go through an initial sweep there's one main thing i'm looking for i'm looking for a move on the turn last time out and how do you know where the final turn is you, you count back from from the finish one two three four okay the first call here is the start of the turn the second call is the end of the turn as you can see, this horse gained almost nine lengths, eight and three quarter lengths on the turn. And I'll just, I'll just mark that and make note of it. Then I move down to the two horse, almost a two length gain on the turn, last out. Okay, none here, but we have something I want to make note of here because we got early speed. Here, nothing. Two back. Sometimes I'll look two back, especially when the races were close, but this is a month. These are almost a month apart. So I'm going to focus mainly on this race. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make my first elimination. Okay. And upcoming videos, we'll, we'll discuss a little bit more about why I'm eliminating particular horses. Like I said, I don't want to go into every little bit and piece here in one video. Um, here, again, we're looking at almost a four length move on the turn. Another move on the turn. And the reason I look at these is um, because horses that make moves on a far turn sometimes come back better horses the next time out. Uh, they come back better horses. Are they? Do they come back good enough to beat their competition? Yeah, that's not easy to predict. But at least this gives you some sort of an idea that this horse may be a better horse this time out when we look at all the other things that we're going to focus on. As you can see, we got a lot of, a lot of runners here that have made moves on the far turn last time out. Okay, and then we have which probably here is going to be our obvious speed horse of the race. So I want to make a note of that as well. Nothing. Okay, there's a one and a half length move. Sometimes I'll only. Play horses that made two lengths or better. There's a two length move. All right. So there. We're looking at 
a total of 14 runners minus the one I eliminated, which is the four. So I want to set up my grid right now. And this is Keeneland 10th. There's 14 runners. I'm going to have to narrow this down a little bit or add a couple columns. So I'm going to add a couple columns. I'm going to insert. I'm going to insert at least one column because I tossed a four. I'm going to go one, two, three, five. Six. Sorry for the delay. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and fourteen. Now these grids are already set up with the formulas in them to calculate the things I like to calculate. Um, so I will not be going in today on on what formulas should be put in to each of these cells here, here here as well and there okay so now I'd like to make note now of my horses that have moved on the turn so I'm gonna go one the two the five the six the seven the nine one two five six seven nine and I will color code moves on the turn by using a lighter shade of orange. One, two, five, six. This is a good memory test here. Seven, and I think it was nine. I think that was it. Okay. The reason I make note of that is because once I'm finished at looking at these past performances and I go and start focusing on my grid, I don't usually go back again. That's it, so that allows me to remember. Okay, now, next thing I like to do on a route race, such as this one, two turns, I like to do a late speed figure. And the late speed figure is a fraction, final quarter of the race, if I can, and I eventually convert it to a, a, an actual rating. So here, with a mile 70, I can't get a, an actual final quarter out of a mile 70. Okay, it's just not... They just don't give it. So I'm going to move back a race, a couple races. Since since these stakes horses are pretty sharp, I'm going to I'm going to look back instead of estimating. I'm going to find a race where he ran fairly well that I could actually get a final quarter or at least close to a final quarter. I'm going to go to this mile and eighth race here, and I'm going to use the six furlong to the mile to estimate. So 111 to a 134 is a 23 and one. And then I'm going to adjust it based on lengths gained or lost. So we lost, he gained two lengths. So a 23 and 1 would actually be a 22 and 4 when I adjust it based to the gain, lengths gained there. And again, like I said, I'm not going to go over everything thoroughly that I do in one video. Um, this video here is just kind of like a, a, a walkthrough. A lot of you can get an understanding based on what I'm doing here. Um, and some of you might just be lost. So please, you can ask questions in the comments. If it's if the answers aren't you know long-winded, I'll, I'll answer them for you. Uh, here we got 111.2 to a 33, which is a 21 and 3. No lengths gained or lost, so we're going to keep it at a 21 and 3, which is actually a pretty good adjusted final fraction. The 3 horse. Sometimes you get this. So i got to move down. To a couple. Now we're looking at Canterbury, Churchill Downs, and I'm looking at this 50 to 1 here, and I'm going to take my chances because I want to be able to narrow this down as much as possible. I'm going to toss out the three as well from this race. Okay, so we just eliminated another horse. And I use I usually use a, a darker red. You know, again, you can use whatever color you want, but I use a darker red to let me know that I've eliminated that horse. The four I've already taken out of the grid. Now the five, I'm looking at a final quarter mile here, raw fraction of a 24 and three, but this horse actually lost seven lengths. So I gotta go seven fifths, add to that to a 24 and three, which is a 25 and three, 
25 and 4. That's actually a 25 final fraction. Okay. Here I have a 23. Almost four lengths gain, so we get 22 and 1. Mile 16. We have no others to look for because this is a shipper, European shipper, and they don't give you all that information. So here's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to refer to a chart that I use that I got out of um, another book, which I will be talking about in a few minutes. We have a 29, actually a 28 and 4, 28 and 3, 28 and 2. When I refer to this chart that I'm talking about, 29 would be a 23 and 1. 28 and 2 would be three ticks off of that, which would be a 22 and 3. This would be a 28, 22 and 3. And I lost my okay down. And I'm holding that thought for I'm gonna discuss again the, what, what source I used before. Now I'm looking at another horse here and I'm saying this is crazy. You know, I'm trying to find a, a, a final quarter in this mess. A mile and a half race, a mile and three eighths. Um, I'm looking at a 30 to one morning line. So I'm gonna, again, go out on a limb and I'm gonna cross this horse out here. Okay, I'm gonna get rid of the eight. Because again, the less there is to look at, easier it is in the brain. Sometimes it doesn't work in your favor, but let's hope this time it does. Okay, mile and a quarter. Okay, we're not going to get a, f a true final quarter, so I'm going to go from the, again, from the six furlong to the mile, which would be a 24 and four, and then 24.3 total there. The 10 horse, our probable speed horse. I'm going to go back to where I can get a true read here which is a 24 and 3, one length gained, lost. So it's a 24 and 4. Here, once again, crazy, crazy. I know, why did I select this particular race today to use as the, the first race? But we'll be fine. 25, that's 25 seconds. Almost there. We're going to go back to here. We're going to get a 22, 21, and 4. The 13. Uh, we're going 23 and 2, 22 and 4. And finally, there's nothing I can get from here. Okay, again, these, some of these races do not have any, any internal fractions there. So I'm going to go on a limb here, and hopefully I'm not cutting my throat. I'm going to cross out. I'm going to eliminate number 14 as well. Okay, so now, going to our grid, we are dealing with three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten horses. Okay, manageable field. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my Windows 10 split screen. And I'm going to focus on figures from here on out. And our race is coming up shortly. So I'm going to, instead of walking you through this, I'm going to do my thing. And see if you maybe you can pick up what I'm doing as I go along. Because as I said, every video is not meant to explain every one of the methods here. Okay, I will now convert my late speed figure to an actual rating. 96.
And in case you're curious, my ratings are based on last speed figure or the late speed figure. I use a 23 flat as a standard. And I'll adjust that and make a speed figure. So a 23 flat would be 100. Okay, for every tick or fifth of a second off of 23, I will add or subtract a point from 100. So here we have a 25. And I'll start backwards here. So that's two seconds. That's 10 full fifths. So that would actually be a 90. Now let me go back here. We got a 103 for the best this year. We got a 103 for the best on the turf. We got a 103 for best at this distance. Got a 90 last out. Last out again. No adjustment needed. And those adjustments I'll talk about at another time. So as you can see, I'm getting figure totals here based on my formulas. Now we are on number six, right? Okay, we... I'm looking at some short figures there, but I don't want to jump the gun and eliminate simply because of the late speed figure there. So let me see where things pan out here. 97, 97. Now this one needs an adjustment. And again, I'm just going to do it without explaining anything right now. And we're looking at a 104 for a late speed off of his last race. Now this is all going to be all 98s because there's only one race where I can get a figure from. So I'm going to take my chance here. I don't want to throw him out. This is a horse based on his form. Last out. Shipper on turf. Mike Smith procuring McLaughlin. I would probably use this horse in my exotics. But let's see if we can pick a winner here. Or a good win play show horse. Okay, the gate's out. The nine. Now, once you get these methods down, you can fly through this. This race here normally would take me about six minutes to do from start to finish. But obviously, because I'm my dialogue here, trying to multitask, I'm losing my train of thought a little bit. And please, guys, in your comments, if there's anything you think I could add to make these videos a little bit more exciting please tell me let me know please critics be easy on me this is my first video I am making and I want the videos to focus mainly on these methods and not a not a whole lot of fluff intro if you feel I need more of an intro let me know and I'll see what I can do for an intro uh, you don't see my face on here because I'm using the Vavi screen editor which picks up everything from the screen instead of me having a camera pointing at my screen now we're getting closer to post time I can imagine so I'm just going to kind of rail through these hopefully some some of you are picking something up from this of what I'm doing if anything you, 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 you hopefully you got something out of the initial sweep that I did and what I look for in a, in a two-turn race. 98. We don't have a distance here. <coughs> today's distance. So i got to go with something closest to it. So I'm going to go with that 94 from a mile 16th on the turf. 94. 96. Oop, i do a 94 again. 98. In case you're curious, these figures here are the last three races. Unless for some reason my gut tells me to toss one of those three, I'll bump down and use another one. Okay, 25 would be a 90. Getting close to the finish line. 100. 100. 100. 93. 93. 
many? 92, 94, and 101s. And finally, number 13. Adjust that. Ninety-six. Okay, so my grid is done. So I'm going to look at my totals over here, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on all the bold columns. I'm going to find the highest total in every in all my bold columns. Hopefully, my multitasking here doesn't cause me to miss one here. Uh, got a ninety-eight point three. 99. Oh, see, I missed one. 99. It's actually 100. 100 is the top. Here we have two tied at 200. And we have a 206 tie there. And then I'll find what I call my also eligibles. I'll look for horses that are within 10 points of the leader in each col each of these col or each of these first two columns so I can go all the way down to a 196 which leaves one lone horse not eligible in that column now from here I go all the way down to 190 which I think is going to eliminate a few from this column yes eliminates two and again we have a trend here the 11. Now the rest of the columns, I will go back as far as five. So five from 100, anything with a 95 or better, I will take on board. Now here, I will use five as well. A 98 qualifies, it's 97, and it's 95.6 just makes it. Here, I'll go within two, usually with the late speed. I'll go within two, and then I'll just take my top four point getters. 87, 685, and so I messed up again. Okay. We actually have the one as the top point getter there. See? I do that every now and then. So now I'm looking at a grid here where I'm seeing something that I like out of the following horses. And I'm going to use a shade of color that I don't normally use for anything else. I'm liking the one. And I'm also liking the late speed on the six. So let's see how much time we have and what we're looking at here as far as odds go. So I go to Keeneland. And with Keeneland, 10. right at post time and it looks like the nine is going off as our favorite okay how about the ten I'm going to take them colors back so I can see where they fall right now the six horse best late speed the one horse top in points 25 to 1 so as you can see, we have some long shot chance. So let's say we're focusing on win place show wagers. I would make my win place show wager on the one and the six. If I'm looking for deeper exotics, obviously I'm going to include the nine. Okay, I'm going to include the nine. But this is kind of enticing here because of this one horse figure in the best totals. And uh, or the highest total here. And the nine, maybe a one nine ten box. Or a one six nine ten. Okay. Remember that number. And let's go to the race. Oop. Wrong race. We want race ten. Computer's running a bit slow here because of the screen editor software running I'm assuming my apologies ok 
Okay, now we get to race 10. Here we go. Again, I'm sorry. I apologize for the delay there. And they're about to go. So let's sit back and watch and see what happens. And I'm just doing something quickly here. Something on the side. Sorry, that had nothing to do with my video. That is a Derby Wars tournament that I am in. I almost forgot to make my play, so as you can see, I made my play the one horse. And if you focus your attention up here in the corner, I would make this video bigger. But for some reason, my TVG videos freeze on the screen and when I make them full screen. So we're going to have to work with the smaller video here. So let's see. We predict it. They are at the post. We predicted that the 10, I think. It was, would be out and the they're off they in the Shadwell out. Turf Mile. Heart to Heart broke alertly, and so did Voodoo Song. No surprise in either case. These two come Voodoo right out to the front of the field in the opening strides. Bound for Nowhere, who was reluctant to load into the gate, comes out running oh, in third. And great wide open is fourth, saving ground toward so the again, inside around the first turn. Nine, Analyze ten. it, fifth, one lane off the rail. Next shares, sixth toward the inside. Al Minar is seventh as they move up the back stretch. Imperative is eighth. Multiplier is ninth. Herbon is, is tenth in between right horses. Now. Synchrony goes in the eleventh position up the back stretch. And then further back, you've got Mr. Misunderstood and Big Score. Opening quarter, 23.37 seconds. Heart to heart, voodoo song. Go at it for the lead. A neck separate the top two. Gap of two bound for nowhere. Third by a head just to the outside of great wide open 47.14 seconds for that opening half mile they move into the far turn heart to heart trying to turn back voodoo song leads it by a length heart to heart does and then great wide open in third two lengths off the lead bound for nowhere fourth analyze it moves toward the extreme outside in fifth next shares is five lengths off the lead looking toward the rail in six Kurban and Almanar have to swing wide eight lengths from the front great wide open neck shares move either side heart to heart analyze it there on the outside synchrony runs late from fifth toward the rail neck shares charging up the inside for Tyler Gaffalione a five length lead to great wide open analyze it and then Kurban it is neck shares 20 at 23 to 1, to, one we to win it. the Shadwell Turf Mile in 1 minute, 36.97 seconds. And there you go. 23 to 1 winner on the one horse. And what do we get for the exotics there? Who came in second? Who came in third? Remember, we played a 1-6-9-10. See if we can make this bigger just for a split second. Okay, the three got second. But what we got, what we needed. The one horse coming in at 23 to 1. One three seven. And again, our one was our top point getter. And that would have been the win place show horse especially at 23 to 1 and as you saw i just played, played it as my derby wars choice for that race and that's most likely that's most definitely going to put me in first place so i'd like to close this video off by saying i hope you were enticed a little bit on what you saw and uh i look forward to comments and uh, remember if you're interested in the tutorial Click the link you find in my comment section. And until next time, let's hope we can nail another one.